I'm Kathy. I'm Rachel, and this is Lunabur Book Club. The full moon for August is called the Sturgeon Moon. So we thought fish, and then we thought where the fish live? Water. Water. So we thought water books. So today we are recommending some books that heavily feature water. Heavily? Not heavily? <laughs> Today we are featuring book, no, today we are recommending books that feature water. Some more heavily than others. <laughs> okay, Kathy, you start. I'm going to go first. And we have talked about this book a lot on the channel and we will continue to do so. This is The Gloaming by Kirsty Logan. It is a book set on an island. Mm -hmm. It features mermaids. Mm -hmm. And on this island, like, it, it feels like it's off the Scottish coast. I don't think it exactly says where it is. But on this island, from time to time, when people seem to like get weary of life, they walk up to the cliff and turn to stone. Ooh. Hmm. And there's a family living in a hotel that's like falling apart. And there's three children and there's tragedy. And then there's a bit of romance and there's some magical realism. This is like a perfect sultry summer read. And um, obviously island, lots of water, mermaids, water. It's really magical and it's one of my favourite books. Nice. Your turn. My first one, the one at the top of my pile, is Pearl by Sean Hughes. So this is a book that is about a woman whose mother disappeared when she was, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine or something. And the book is, it's kind of dealing with grief and how you move forward when something so drastic changes in your life and the way that the main character who I've forgotten the name of deals with her mother's disappearance how she grew up without a mother um, and it's kind of like steeped in folklore Ooh. kind of stuff like her mother's quite free-spirited and believes in the earth sustaining us and like it's quite hippie and things like that um, but there's a, a river near their land that features quite heavily in <laughs> Continu <laughs> continuity is not helped. The, the book takes its title and part of the, the narrative of the book is based on a medieval poem called Pearl, oh, cool. um, which is about um, a grieving father who thinks that his, um, his, I think his daughter dies and he is walking next to a stream and thinks that the heavenly afterlife is on the other side of the stream so it's like oh. it, it, it is all it was all centered around yeah. around the theme of water so it, it is a water book i promise it I is promise. yeah okay my next book is fen by daisy johnson this is a collection of short stories that are all inspired by fenland hmm. so marshy land bogs it includes the story of a girl turning into an eel and to a bunch of vampires living in a house who realise that fen men taste different <laughs> to other men. Um, and a story where a house falls in love with a woman. Um, but A house? A house falls in love with a woman. Okay. <laughs> so these stories are quite surreal, um, again folklore-y, um, and all inspired by an area of marshland and wetland and... I think it's a cool like in-between place, Finland. Like it's water, but it's land, and it's a bit all mixed together. And this is a really fun short story collection. The second book I have brought is called The Maggie by James Dillon White. This is a Scottish novel, which is about um, the captain of a really old dilapidated boat who um, need, it, 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 he's a bit of a con man really, and he offers to transport some really expensive equipment for some American billionaire and it's about his adventures getting that to the place that the billionaire wants him to get it to across the rough Scottish ocean. Sounds really fun. It is, it is, it is funny. It is fun. It's funny and it's, yeah, it's just cute. Oh, Again, sounds I don't say a lot about books, do I? It's okay. Anyway, it's your turn. Terrible. Okay, last one. Again, we've mentioned this before, so sorry. Uh, this is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. The plot of this is that in an ancient inn along the banks of the River Thames, the patrons are telling ghost stories to one another. Ooh. And then a man bursts in and he's carrying in his arms a dead child who's just Ooh. drowned in the river. But then, hours later, the child comes back to life. 
and she's really little and um, she's not speaking and people can't figure out who she belongs to and there's two potential families who have both lost children to the river mm -hmm. who this child could be okay um, so they don't recognise it well that that's the okay. crucial thing <laughs> uh, so yeah so this is a really beautiful novel there's a woman in there who's like um, an early scientist mm -hmm. so she's really cool and there's lots of stories about the Thames and rivers and where the river waters come from so it's a really fun read a bit gothic mm -hmm. and I really like it I do have some other books at my house that I think will feature water so there's The Hungry Tide um, there's The House by the Cerulean Sea mm -hmm. and there's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea Ah, does I'm... that feature water? I, that's your that's your book that you gave me. Oh, I did give you Is it? Is it? It does. It does is it submarine, water, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's Captain Nemo. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I do have books that I could have brought to the video, but I haven't read them, so I couldn't talk about them. Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea is quite interesting because it's like one of the original sci-fi ones, mm -hmm. and there's a really good story, and Captain Nemo's a really complex character. But in between the really good story bits. Mm -hmm. There's really long descriptions of the underwater environments that they see. Ooh, so I that's actually, cool. Yeah, it is cool. If you're interested in like fish and different... Like sharks. Yeah, yeah, there's sharks and I think there's even a giant squid. Mm -hmm. So there's like, there is like, there's a lot of description. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're cool with that, you'll, you'll okay. enjoy that. I got a little bit bored of some of the description, but the overall story is really fascinating and just like so ahead of its time. Okay. Really cool. Okay. I think The Hungry Tide is about someone that like drowns in a marsh, but don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. Uh, the House by the Cerulean Sea might just be called that because it's next to the sea. I don't know how much the sea actually features. Mm. Um, I often think that, well, a lot of my library books end up featuring water. I think because I go to the library to get holiday books, it's like, oh yeah, seaside. So I used to get loads of island ones. I think you would enjoy this, but it's also quite miserable. Mm. So I don't know if you actually would. Yeah. Just pause while Rob comes in, and then we'll sign off, and then we're done. Hi, Rob. Hello. Do you have fun? Did you buy anything? I bought a book for work, and I bought a running T-shirt. Nice. That's okay. pretty much it. Oh, this, this is, is Rob. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Anyway, those are some books that feature water in varying degrees. Uh, if you know any books about water. Put it down below. We release videos every Friday, so make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. <laughs> My second uh, book on. comic. Could you Ooh, like? Lazy buddy. Could you have some chill? <coughs> Why are you looking at what's wrong with my name? Look, Rachel's knee has got books and phones on. My knee's all available. Contrary thing. I we I have accidentally been filming in slow motion for like the last three weeks. Yeah, she's got seven videos. In slow motion. In slow motion with no audio. Oh no audio. It's not no. like you could speed it up. No. Unless That's you can think of a way to we don't we don't really understand technology.